In this video, I'm going to tell you, finally, about the new Army Painter Speed Paints. Are they any better than contrast paints? Let's find out. You've probably seen a few videos about this already, but the Army Painter is releasing a new line of paints called Speed Paints. Now, Speed Paints, everybody wants to paint faster, well, most people want to paint faster, uh, but Speed Paints are kind of Army Painter's answer to Citadel's contrast paints, which I use all of the time, as it turns out. Um, Citadel's contrast paints came out, I think, in 2019 in the summer, and uh, I made a video about a year later about what I would thought of them after using them for quite some time. You can watch that up here. Pachow. And now, coming like next month and a little bit into the month after that, February and March, from what I understand, there will be a release from Army Painter of new paints, which they refer to as speed paints, which are basically contrasts. But after I've been using them, I think they're a little bit different. And uh, I've wanted to test them out on several different situations and different types of things, and then let you know what I think. So, well, here we are. So initially, they sent me seven colors to test out. Uh, dark Wood, which is pretty close to Citadel's Wildwood, which is one of my favorite contrast colors. Uh, Cloud Burst Blue, which is similar to Citadel's Ultramarine's Blue, which is honestly probably my least favorite uh, contrast color. Um, Gravelord Gray, which is like Citadel's kind of uh, Basiliconum Gray. Fire Giant Orange, which is pretty close to, or, you know, right in the same area as uh, Citadel's Griffhound Orange. Zealot Yellow, which is close to Iandin Yellow. And then Orc with a C uh, skin, which is basically very, very close to Citadel's Orc with a K, Flesh. And then uh, Holy White, which is basically a matchup to uh, Citadel's Apothecary White. None of these colors are really exact matches in actually more than just one way, but I'll explain more about that later. Um, to test, I grabbed a bunch of old models that mostly kind of matched each other, and I primed them all white, and I got to work. I put Army Painter's Dark Wood, Cloudburst Blue, and Gravelord Gray on the lower half of three different Space Marine Scouts. Uh, then I put Citadel's Wildwood, Ultramarine Blue, and Basiliconum Gray on the lower half of three other Space Marine Scouts. After they'd all dried, then I put Fire, Fire Giant Orange, Zealot Yellow, and Orc Skin on the upper parts of the Speed Paint painted models, because it was the Speed Paint colors, and then Griffhound Orange, Iandin Yellow, and Orc Flesh on the upper half of the Citadel painted models. So hopefully this all makes sense. Uh, as I had run out of scouts, unfortunately, uh, I finished up by putting Army Painter's Holy White on the upper half of this Beaky Marine and then Citadel's Apothecary White on the lower half. Eventually, everything dried and I was able to make some comparisons. So uh, these guys here, I don't even have to look on the marking that I put on the underside of the base. I don't even have to look to see which one's which. I know this one is the Army Painter one, and this one is the Citadel one. And the reason for that is because the Army Painter one is just generally a bit smoother. One of the reasons I used these um, Space Marine Scouts is, A, because they were built already and you know wasn't, I wasn't going to use them for anything else. But B, it's also not exactly the material that you should be using contrast on, frankly. There's a lot of smoothness going on here, right? So there's a lot of, go of smoothness going on, and because of that, um, you see a little bit more gloppiness with the, army, the Citadel stuff. This is um, Orc Flesh, and this is uh, or Orc Skin, whatever it's called, and then the other, uh, the Basiliconum Gray. Now, that's not necessarily bad. You want more contrast in your paints like this. You want spots where it gets real dark and real light, right? Um, that's kind of the point. Whereas these pants here, with the Army Painter ones, it doesn't really pull, a, you know, it doesn't pull away from the sharp parts, so you don't get as much of a highlight. Everything's kind of a little bit more the same tone, which gives you a smoother look, but it also doesn't pull away. If this was a furry creature or a scaly creature, I don't know how well it would work. Uh, it, the, you know, and I'll show you a little bit of that in a, in a bit, actually. But yeah, these models, you know, so here's the green. And again, this is Army Painter, and this is your Citadel. Um, I've also got the two orange and browns. Let's see if I can figure out which one's which just by looking at them. Uh, I'm going to say that this one over here is the Army Painter. Do I mark an A on there? I did. So the Army Painter now is on the right, and this stuff is just kind of, uh, you know, it's, it's fine. It's working great. It's doing its job. It's just 
a little bit less splotchy, which sometimes this brown can make it look like worn leather pants if it's a bit splotchy, whereas here it's just more a little bit monocolor, but it's still covering really nicely in my opinion, especially when you look, see how close I can get. When you look real close at that bolter, the one on the left, which is the Citadel paint, is uh, a lot more splotchy, a lot more places where it dried kind of dark and just left over than the one on the right. And I painted them at the same time and um, used the same brush and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, you're, you're going to get a little bit more variation maybe with the Citadel stuff than you will with um, the stuff from Army Painter. And it, it depends on the model whether that's good for you or not. So with these last two scouts, using the yellow and the blue, um, this one over here, I'm pretty sure, is the Games Workshop because that blue is pretty gross. Yes. So. This is your Games Workshop. There's your Ultramarines Blue, which I've never been a fan of. It, right from the get, when it first came out, it was one of the first colors I tried, and I was like, oh, this doesn't bode well. But, you know, everything else has been pretty good. And then over here, uh, this guy's got a lot more of a smooth thing going on, and I think the blue works a lot better, this Cloudburst Blue. Um, I'm pretty happy with it, and I end up, you know, uh, finding that these are a lot smoother, I think, generally. You can still glop them, don't get me wrong. You can end up screwing up and putting too much on them or whatever like that. Uh, it happens. You'll see it happens a little bit on the shoulder pads on these guys. Like, you shouldn't be using contrast colors or speed paints on smooth shoulder pads like this, because they will glop up and give you some dark spots and light spots in places that should be all kind of smooth, kind of as a, a matter of course. Uh, and then lastly here is our Beaky Marine. His upper part is done in the Army Painter stuff, uh, holy white, and his lower part is done in the uh, Apothecary White from Games Workshop. And I'll be perfectly honest with you, I don't see a huge difference. I honestly think that these two are possibly the closest matches of the colors that I've come across in general. So um, they work real great. I would generally, if I was trying to paint this guy white, whether I was using the Contrast or the Army Painter, I would slop this all on there, wait for it to completely dry, and then dry brush it white to kind of bring out the flat areas again. And then the kind of crevices and stuff stay gray and become shadows. And it's great. It will, it'll work fine. So um, that's what I did with these guys, but then I did eventually get the full set of Army Painter Speed Paints. I think they call it the Mega Set or something like that. And I decided to do a few direct comparisons. The different shades of brown that are within Citadel's contrast line are some of my favorite colors in that whole line. And I use them nearly on every project, like all the time. So once I got access to the full Speed Paint set, I wanted to do some more comparisons, especially within my favorite colors from Citadel. But I didn't want to try them on more models. I wanted to try them on bits of paper towel. When I'm trying to determine like the differences between Citadel, let's say, contrast colors, when you look at them in the bottle, they're a lot darker than what they look like when they actually get onto a model. In the bottle is a lot darker because it's very fluid. It's just like washes. Washes look incredibly dark in the bottle, but when you put them on, they're actually pretty light. Opaque paints don't do that as much. Opaque paints will come across a little bit lighter than they are, and then as you put them on the model and they dry, they dry down a little bit, and then it becomes a situation where, you know, it's a little bit darker than it was in the bottle. But that's not the case with washes, um, glazes to some degree, and these types of paints, the contrast and the, and the, the speed paints. So putting them onto a piece of paper towel, it kind of like soaks into the paper towel and spreads out a little bit, and then it's a white piece of paper towel, and then you can really, that's what I use when I really want to see the difference between two colors from, say, uh, contrast, or even differences in washes and things like that, comparing, say, uh, Citadel washes to Army Painter washes. I've done that a bunch of times to go, well, is this one actually lighter than that or not, or has this one got more red in it? So if you're ever trying to figure out those types of transparent paints, use a piece of paper towel. So anyway, I got Citadel's Skeleton Horde and Army Painter's Pallid Bone, which I figure are about as close as you're going to get to those two. Because of the naming conventions, these are the ones I bet probably are supposed to go together, right? Uh, Citadel's Agaros Dunes and then Army Painter's Sand Golem and then Citadel's Snakebite Leather, which is honestly, again, one of my favorites within the, uh, the, the Citadel line, and then Army Painter's Hardened Leather. And then I applied them to a white paper towel, a little stripe of each. The results were interesting. None of the colors, really, are that close to each other uh, from naming conventions alone, you know, as far as between Army Painter and, 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 and uh, Games Workshop, Citadel. Um, this is not honestly a bad thing, in my opinion. Before, I had three colors that I used on tons of different projects. I, you know, and now I can technically have up to six of that same kind of brown sort of area. You know what I mean? Sometimes you want Pallid Bone from the Army Painter because it's a little bit darker than Citadel's Skeleton Horde and, you know, so on. So 
more choice, I think, is good, frankly, in, in, in your um, transparent paints over the type of stuff that I have a tendency to paint. So all of this is great, painting paper towels and white primed models and all that kind of stuff. But generally, I don't paint paper towels or white primed models. It actually makes me a little itchy to paint those white, those white models. Um, so then the question becomes, how do these speed paints work on my favorite technique, which is Zenithal highlighting? I had a Tyranid Broodlord that was just kind of sitting in the basement. It was built. It was part of a failed project, and it just sort of, meh. Uh, anyway, I, I primed it up with Monument Hobbies Black Primer and then a highlight from above with my airbrush uh, uh, with Monument Hobbies White Primer. And then I got to work with the speed paints. Uh, I've talked about, um, you know, that type of priming, that black and white, that Zenithal, a lot of bunch. Uh, Pachow, check that out over there. Now, um... This is not all going to be only speed paints. I don't ever paint completely just with contrast paints. I always use them as a, as a big arrow in my quiver, as it were, but I use a lot of other stuff as well. So this test that I'm going to be doing here to make this model pop and, and, and work out with these um, Army Painter paints, I will also be using a couple other things in here, some washes and some edge highlighting or you know, dry brushing, things like that, some metallics, that kind of stuff. But I think it's weird to only ever paint with just contrast or just speed paints. Uh, you you want to mix these things into your repertoire. So I started with pallid bone and kind of slopped it all over the arms and the legs and the head and all that kind of stuff. And it dried pretty nicely. But here's kind of an interesting point about the Army Painter paints, these, these speed paints, is it, it actually took a really long time to dry. Longer, I feel, than Citadel's contrast paints do. Like as a person who uses them all the time, I feel like... These speed paints maybe take a lot longer to dry, or at least a decent amount longer to dry. And that could help about why they maybe smooth out a little bit more. They're actually, because they take longer to dry, they have time to self-level a little bit, move around. I'm not sure, but I do notice that they take longer to dry. And that's going to come up again in a little while. Um, I then used a, like a cheap makeup brush to uh, dry brush everything with Pro Acryl Ivory. And then for the, the carapace, the big uh, kind of armored part on the back of the Broodlord, I knew that... Uh, I knew the purple that I wanted in my head, but uh, after kind of messing around on some paper towel and stuff like that, I found that neither purple alchemy, which is too light, or hive dweller purple, uh, which is too dark, the, not, neither of them was going to do the job. So what I ended up doing is actually kind of mixing, and I ended up using three drops of the purple alchemy to every one of the hive dweller uh, purple, and, then, and that actually worked out pretty great. And I painted the comparison, uh, the, 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 the carapace, all the armor, all that stuff, and then waited for it to dry for a while. While I waited, I used the blood red speed paint on the claws, which actually came out really nicely. It's a really kind of great color. It reminds me a lot of actually Blood Angel's red contrast paint, which I use on all kinds of things. It's one of my favorites. Once the carapace was finally dry, then I went and used some faded plum uh, opaque you know, acrylic paint from Monuments Pro Acryl line to dry brush highlights onto it, again, using a big fat makeup brush. Um, then I grabbed some Agrax Earthshade wash from Citadel, the brown stuff, to work on darkening kind of like the neck and blending the carapace. And, and I even did some blending and shading down near the Broodlord's evil butt. Just because that purple, you know, it just goes straight to an edge and then all of a sudden it's kind of that bone color. And I wanted to mix things together, but I also really kind of wanted to you know, just make it so that the head was brighter than the neck, if you know what I mean. Um, I then put some of the Army Painter Red Tone, which is not a speed paint, it's one of their normal washes, uh, and I painted that into the little splits in the Broodlord's limbs and all that kind of stuff, and the, the creases between their elbows and all that jazz. I also used it on the horn and the tongue and all that, and then I started on the basing. I used Sand Golem speed paint to paint the big alien spike thing that the Broodlord is kind of standing on on the base. And I really like the way that it like soaked into all the details but wasn't too splotchy. You know what I mean? Um, then I used, after that kind of mostly set up and dried, I used the magic blue color uh, uh, on the underside, the weird kind of dark fleshy, I don't know what that is, underside that spike. And then uh, once that was all dry, I used Gravelord Gray again heavily on the base and soaked it into all the texture and stuff like that. And then after that was all done, I used Citadel's Agrax Earthshade wash to help blend kind of where the alien spike thing kind of comes out of the gray base. I wanted to sort of work those two things together and I did some of that. And then once all of that was dry, I did a light gray dry brush with Pro Acryl's uh, bright neutral gray on the base texture and on the alien spike thing, kind of helped to tie the two together. And then uh, I painted the rim black and then uh, and here he is. He's, uh, 
I mean, for, for being a pretty short, quick paint job, he kind of turned out, I think, pretty well. I'm going to try to have some fancier pictures here too as well. But um, just everything went quickly. Uh, the dry brushes really did help, which you should always, even if you decide, no, I don't want any of these speed paints. I'm going to stick with my contrast paints. You should be dry brushing over it after it's dry to give you, and you should be using a makeup brush to give you some really nice highlights. Um, but it worked out really quickly and really well, and I was real happy with it. Even put a little skull down there and painted him. That was all opaque colors. I didn't use any speed paints for the skull. But was I done with just that Tyranid, dear viewer? Oh no, 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 no. I also had a, a lizard man model for another failed project for Kill Team. Uh, but this lizard man uh, has a bolter and a Tau drone dish as a shield, not the normal spear and whatnot. He also got a Zenithal Prime of Monument Black and then a uh, white primer over the top of that. And then I started on the body and all of those, those tasty, tasty scales, which is what I was really looking forward to. I chose Army Painter's Magic Blue Speed Paint as I wanted, you know, like the lizard to be real bright, real bright blue, like a poisonous kind of lizard. I don't know. It soaked into all the spaces between all the scales exactly as I had hoped. And, uh, you know, it, it just makes sense. This is a texture that contrast and speed paints and all that kind of stuff are just made for, honestly. And then after it all had dried or had it, uh, I did a quick dry brush of sky blue from Monument Hobbies. And then uh, it was time to start working on that big weird head bone thing. After doing the big head bone with pallid bone, I started using ivory from Pro Acryl on the spikes. And it seemed like maybe the magic blue speed paint wasn't as dry as I had thought as the ivory, as I was putting it on the little spikes, it's an opaque color, started mixing with the blue as I was painting it. And so now all of a sudden I had a bluish ivory. So maybe wait longer than I did. You don't know how long I wait. Just wait longer than you might think. Uh, I, I was able to paint this whole lizard man honestly in one sitting. And according to the timestamps on the camera files, um, it, uh, it was... 11 a.m. to 106 p.m. For the, from the first shot to the last shot that I filmed. So that's pretty quick. And that includes drying time and all that kind of stuff. And normally when I'm painting, I am uh, faster because I'm not filming it at the same time I'm trying to set all that up. And I'm also like, okay, this guy's drying. I go into the next guy and I work on him. This was just me like kind of sitting there kind of just hoping, you know, that things were going to get dry pretty soon so I go on to the next step. Um, but still, all of that being said, pretty speedy. Speed paints as they call them. But maybe give the speed paints a little bit longer to dry than, you know, so you don't get weird colors. I added a brown wash to the spikes just to kind of help, you know, darken them down again a little bit. Painted the lizard man's little toes with um, Gravelord Gray speed paint. And then started using rich gold from Pro Acryl on the bracelets and the metal tips on some of the spikes and on his tail and stuff like that. I then used Fire Giant Orange on the shield, even though... When I had primed it, it was actually darker than I probably should have. If I was to go back and do this again, I would have added more of a fade to the shield with the, the white, uh, you know, highlight uh, in the priming phase. And, and it would have stood, but it, yeah. But anyway, once that all dried, I then did some dry brushing on the gun to get that kind of thing to be silver and like the edges are all kind of, you know, beat up and things like that. And then I even did some more quick dry, uh, brushing highlights on the back spikes as well. I quickly added some uh, Pro Acryl Ivory to the little lizard man's teeth and then put some uh, Gravelord Gray speed paint again uh, on the basing texture that just kind of like I did with the, with the Tyranid. And by this point, the shield was finally dry. And then I painted a little vent in the back of the shield silver, did some shield damage and some dry brushing with some more silver, dry brushed the base texture with Dark Umber from Monument Hobbies again. Spent a little bit more time highlighting the scales a little bit more with sky blue from Monument. This wasn't needed. I just kind of wanted to. They looked pretty cool. And then I painted up the rim. And then uh, done. Here's, here's our boy. And we're going to, again, like I said, if I can get him to focus. There we go, buddy. Uh, I'm going to get some closer pictures as well. But this is a very fast little quick paint. Yet still, I think, pretty decent. And, um, you know, again, I'm blending together both the... Uh, you know, these transparent paints over the Zenithal and then doing a lot of, you know, edge highlighting and some other bits and some dry brushing. But it's literally, you know, transparent paints, washes, some dry brushing, a little bit of picking out. You know, there's definitely some stuff on his, on the little back spikes that I've just basically painted in there, um, you know. And then um, he's even got a little skull as well, you can see there. Um, but yeah, again, a super quick very fun little paint job. And if you were doing a whole bunch of these in uh, like an assembly line, you could crank through them. 
All right, so this has been a long one, but the real question comes down to what did I think about my using the Army Painter Speed Paints? They're good in many, many ways, but they are different. They are different than contrast paints. At the base level, they're basically the same. They are designed to kind of get down into the nooks and crannies, you know, and all that kind of stuff. They're transparent, so if you use them over like a Zenithal Prime or anything along those lines, they will work great for that as well. Um, the one difference I would say is that I don't know that they, I, I never caught them really pulling away from a sharp kind of highlight area, right? So normal contrast paints, the idea behind them is that they stain the middle areas, they move down into the crevices, and that's how you get your shadow and all that jazz, but they also kind of pull away a little bit. Not too much, but they pull away a little bit from the kind of sharp, detail-y bits that might be in your models. And generally, I find that a lot of the contrast paints from Games Workshop actually do that. I didn't find that happening here as much, but these also generally were less splotchy. So it kind of depends on what you paint and what you're looking for. If you're looking for more of that kind of highlight, you know, okay, well, you may want to stick with contrasts. But if you don't mind just doing a quickie little uh, makeup brush, uh, you know, uh, dry brush over the top of it to catch all the raised bits and give you a nice highlight and then be able to kind of pick the way the color works, pick how much goes on there, you may want to actually take a look at these because they work nice and, again, a little bit less splotchy. They are more fluid, in my opinion, but they also take longer to dry. And I don't know if those two things are related. I am not a scientist of any stripe, frankly, but certainly not a paint scientist. But what I mean by fluid is that the capillary action where you put like a brush full of paint onto something and it kind of sucks out into the different areas and things like that. Army Painter paints... These speed paints do that more than contrast paints, at least in my opinion, over the last several years of working with contrast paints. But maybe that extra fluidity is what part of what takes it longer to dry. I'm not quite sure, but I did notice those two differences. Also, the colors are not designed to match each other. And I, again, I'm going to reiterate this. I think that that's a good thing because if you are... Almost nobody out there is just like, I'm going to go with just this one paint and I'm going to stop using the Citadel or vice versa, right? So um, you're going to end up actually with more colors. Again, small differences and things like that. But in some situations, there's good size differences between two paints that look like they should probably be technically matched to each other from the Citadel and from the, the speed paint. And then being able to have access to both of those paints, if you want to, is really actually kind of nice if you don't like mixing and doing all that kind of stuff. The other really big thing about the difference between these two paints, the speed paints cost half as much, which it's $3.99 American for an 18 milliliter bottle of the speed paints, $7.80 American for an 18 milliliter, again, same size bottle of the contrast paints. So they're almost completely half as much. And that is going to be great. I think for folks who have been interested in trying contrast, but have like, well, yeah, I don't know, they're really expensive. And that, this is going to be a situation that's going to hopefully help more people to be able to paint quicker, um, get results that they like better, especially if they go through and do the Zenithal thing first uh, and, and, and be a lot happier with what they get for, for frankly, less cost, which we all kind of dig. My only one nitpick, honestly, and this is just me being, I wish they came in pots. I just, any kind of paint, like I want, all of my opaque acrylic paints to come in dropper bottles. That's what I want because I'm going to put them on my wet palette or something like that and go to town. Uh, I'm not dipping into a pot to get acrylic paint out, normal opaque paint, and then put it onto the model that I don't want to do it anymore. I don't do it. So I like dropper bottles. With washes and contrasts and glazes, even if you can find some of those old ones, I love the fact I can just dip into the pot, put it right onto the model, and I really dig that. That's one of the reasons that keeps me away a little bit from Army Painter's washes a little bit. And it's not so much that it keeps me away. It's just that I like the Citadel ones so much, and they're already just drip, and there you go. Um, with these, you might notice some of this through the, the, you know, the footage previously. I use these little, um, these little cups that you get. I got them on Amazon. They're for um, tattoo artists. They dip the needle of the ink in there, and then they go to town. I got a big old bag of 1,000 of them for like 15 bucks or something like that. So... That's something to take a look at if you're looking for things like that. Some people will just say, put it on your wet palette, put it on a plastic. That's fine, too. You can do that. Uh, I'm concerned about making a mess sometimes. So uh, that's something. But I do wish, I wish that every paint company put their opaque paints in dropper bottles, which they don't all do. And I wish that every company put their transparent 
uh, in wash in pots. That would be great if you guys could fix that for me. That'd be that'd be great. So I'm not 100% sure on launch dates, but I believe that the starter box launches in February, uh, and then the which is a, a smaller set, and then the mega set launches sometime in March, but. Dates are real fluid because of the world we currently live in with shipping and this and all that kind of stuff. So, um, you know, if you're interested, talk to your local game store and see if they can pre-order that kind of stuff if that's what you want to check out. I assume that the, um, and I don't know this, but I'm assuming that after the launch uh, of the the box sets, then they'll come out with singles and you'll be able to even find them at the rack at your local uh, game store. So if you've been thinking about, you know, contrast paints, but you're not sure and you're like, gosh, they're real expensive these would be a really good alternative. And if you're a person who's like, I just want more contrast paints, I want more colors to choose from, even though a lot of these, like I said, are kind of matched, none of them are exactly matched. So you might want to look at these as well. One, two, three, four.